Hi everyone, welcome back to a virtual episode of Photoshop User TV. I say virtual because we're not actually here. At this very moment, we're in Atlanta. It's the last day of Photoshop World. So we're mentally broadcasting this show to you right now. Do you hear it? Do you feel it? I don't feel it. All right, welcome back everyone. I'm Corey Barker, one of the Photoshop guys here at Kelby One, and I'm joined today by my co-host and all-around weird fellow, Mr. I, I will accept that and cherish it. Indeed. Yes. Mr. Pete Collins. Hey, guys. Pete here. We Good are to be with you. back, and like I said, we are. this actually is the last day of Photoshop World, so we're um, in Atlanta having a good time right now. So, but Hopefully you're there with us, and you're, you're watching this afterwards. As, yes, you're, you're watching it afterwards. So, But we're going to jump right in. We've got um, a few things we're going to talk about today, and um, actually wanted to start with a quick little thing. Had somebody ask um, if we could talk about gear you know, we use and like technology we use, whether it's plugins or anything like that. So I wanted to point out um, my tablet. I haven't pointed it out in a while. I think everybody knows I use a Wacom tablet, but um, you can see this is the, the new Intuos Pro model. Now notice it's not plugged in. You notice that? And it's still working because the Intuos Pro models actually come with the wireless module that you actually take out. Notice this little, it's got a little USB dongle here in my laptop. It allows me to work wirelessly um, from my machine, which it, you almost think, why? If your tablet's next to your desk, you can just plug it in. But it actually is quite handy. It's actually a little bit more or less chaotic with the wires and everything like that. I love it. Um, been a Wacom user for, I don't know, 12, 13 years now. It's, just, it's one of those things where, you know, we have a lot of great friends at Wacom, but I don't like their product because they're friends. They're friends because I love their product and I've always loved their product. So um, You wouldn't be their friends if yeah. their product wasn't that good. No, if the product sucked, they'd be yeah. like, yeah, you guys are great, but I'll see you guys later. But um, Well, I think what uh, testifies to how much he loves that product, look at the top of yeah. his his screen look, there. He he literally at, wears a groove in his... Look at the his, wear on my tablet screen there. Yeah, that's, and so you can't yeah. see much on mine because I only use this on mm -hmm. when, I, when I can't use my Cintiq. Mm -hmm. As soon as we leave here, I go back to my Cintiq mm -hmm. and it looks like I have a groove in the screen from using that, mm -hmm. but we can't live without our Wacom products, can't and so kudos right. to Wacom. All right, so that was my little tangent for the day. All right, we're going to do a little quick little 3D thing here just to kind of give you an idea, and this is uh, almost like one of those brainstorming things I do when I go in and I just kind of jump into Photoshop and say, all right, let's see where we can take this. So I have this kind of uh, paint splatter image. Now the first thing I want to do is actually extract it from its white background. Now here's a quick and easy way to do that. Look at your channels. It's on a white background, so this should be made to look easier, or made, should be a lot easier. The blue background is, of course, extremely dark, or the blue channel is extremely dark against the background. I'm gonna make a duplicate of that blue channel and then invert it. Then I'm just gonna do a fill with white and the blending mode set to overlay. And what that's gonna do is leave the black alone and force any of the other subtle gray areas to white. And that's gonna give me a pristine alpha mask in just a few steps. How cool is that? So now, back over my image, I'm going to command click on that new channel, new alpha channel to make it a, an active selection, and then simply press command J, and that puts it on a new layer, and it's nice and cleanly extracted. Channel tricks, I've used them for years. No matter how advanced some of the selection features become in Photoshop, never forget channels. They are a gem. So, uh, and I'm, I'm just gonna jump in and say, yeah, you get so used to trying to go with the, the uh, quick selection and stuff like that, but there are things that it can't do that your channel Precisely. selection can. And I keep having to walk over to Corey and go, what was that channel trick again? Because I keep forgetting, but he is the master of that. And if you can remember that trick right there using the channels, it will make your life so much easier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so I'm just real quickly putting this extracted paint splash on a new document. It's more horizontal. And then I'm going to just set a little bit of text. So I'm just going to do the word green, because it's green paint. In fact, I'm going to sample the green and fill my text with it. Now, 3D time. I'm going to go and make the text 3D. I'm just going to go to 3D, new 3D extrusion from selected layer. It goes ahead and extrudes the text. There it is. And looking pretty good. Now, with the paint splash, I'm gonna make it 3D, but I don't want to extrude it. I don't wanna give it any volume because it's kind of already got depth to it. It would kind of look weird. So I'm just going to go into 3D to new mesh from layer and choose postcard. What this does is it puts it in a three-dimensional space, but it's still a flat 2D image. So if I were to go and rotate it around, you can see 
It is in 3D, but the splash is flat. You can see the side right there. All right, so now I want to merge these two elements together. Now, I don't want, when you merge two 3D layers together, the bottom layer, like layer styles, the bottom layer are, is going to retain the attributes. So if my text has a lighting, a, a default light attached to it and stuff like that, I want to be able to keep those. So I'm actually going to move my splash above the text layer and then simply press Command E. Command E in normal Photoshop layers just simply merges two layers together. It does the same thing with 3D layers. The, the, uh, the difference is, of course, you can still select the individual 3D elements. So now I can move this around, and we'll just rotate this, nope, got to have the right panels. Current view, there we go. So notice I can move my current view around, and there is my text in there. Now I'm going to go ahead here into the properties while I have current view selected, and you can actually adjust the camera features here. If you're familiar with lenses and such like that, you'll know that for a lower number, you're going to get a wider angle lens. So I'm actually going to go down to 15 on this one and bring it back forward. You notice the extreme perspective I'm getting of this now. Ooh, kind of cool. Now that grid you're seeing, of course, is the ground plane um, visual aid. I'm actually going to go and turn that off. We go to view and go to show and to uncheck ground plane. I'm also going to go to the environment settings over here. And this is something that tends to get you, and you don't really see it until the render, but trust me, it'll be there if you don't, if you, um, if you don't want it there. Go to the environment settings and then go into the properties here under the ground plane shadow. So if I go over here and do this and do a render, of course you don't see it now because I turned off the grid line. Anyway, this shadow is on 60% by default and that's an environment um, setting. Just bring that to zero. So it won't affect uh, your actual graphic or anything like that. So now, Reselect current view. I'm just going to rotate this around. And that's pretty much it. It's just a matter of just going around and determining what angle you want to be able to view it at. But I want to do one last thing, and this is something that a lot of people tend to forget with 3D. I'm going to select the text, go to the 3D menu, and choose split extrusion. What this allows you to do is rotate and reposition each individual letter now. So you're essentially breaking it apart. And now I can go in and create a more chaotic look rather than just that straight on look. You know, it's not easy being green. It's not easy being green, ever. And of course, because I'm able to manipulate all the individual 3D elements, I can get more precise with it. But once I, I can also rotate it as a whole. And then once you're done, go ahead and do a quick render. And voila, instant 3D design. So. Again, it's like I said in another episode, doesn't have to be complicated 3D. And people, there's this stigma still attached to 3D. It's like, oh, it's super complicated. I, I don't really want to educate myself on 3D. That's what the beauty of Photoshop 3D is, is that they've taken all that really complicated stuff out of it and just giving you the ability to go in here and really do something creative with it. So, and this is just one of the many things. Again, experiment, play with it. I guarantee you're going to discover something that's going to really just blow your hair back. So. Unless your hair's unless your hair is really short like mine and Pete's, so you just feel the wind. So, all right, break. That was great. Yeah, let's take a break. Sure, we. All right. Yes. I'm tired of you already. I'm tired. Yes. We're Can gonna I take go? a quick yeah. break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. All right. Hey Corey, we're going to that new pizza place across the street after work. You in? I really wish I could, man. I'm under deadline with this book. I gotta get it done. You're a machine, Corey. You're a machine. Yeah. You have no idea. step-by-step -step Photoshop tricks, type effects, extracting, textures, Hollywood effects, and really bad 3D. 
Photoshop Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers, Volume 2. Your mind will be composited away. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Corey Barker. This is Photoshop User TV. I'm with Mr. Pete Collins. We are, of course, brought to you by Kelby One, who bring you, among many, many things, Photoshop User Magazine. There it is. Super right fast retouch. That's my nickname. Love that <laughs> magazine. Still to this day, even though I'm, I, have a, I write in it, I still look at it as if it was, as if I was a member. I still love that magazine. So. This down and dirty tricks writer, he's a, uh, I don't know. I don't he's, think he's you know, going to make it. He's iffy now and then, so. All right, uh, we're going to move things right along here. Mr. Pete's got something for us, and we're going to do a couple more giveaways, wrap things up, because we've got a plane to catch. Oh, well, no, wait, we're already there. We're already there. Yeah, okay, never mind. <laughs> we're at least halfway there. Yeah. Uh, okay. I want to share with you a little bit about selecting and then something you might not expect about burning. Uh, <laughs> selecting and well. burning. Oh, it got a little burning Burning, there. yeah, hey. yeah right. Uh, mm. Let's say you've got something like this. You've got a stock image like this and you want to pull out these different images. You might want to create a collage of keys or whatever. And oftentimes your stock image will have the white background. And this is my go-to process for pulling stuff off a of white background if it's something like this. I go color range and I simply grab the first eyedropper right here and I click on the white background. And uh, you can then adjust kind of the fuzziness of that. Uh, obviously the darker the, the object is, the more solid it's going to be. If I start doing this, then there's going to be some transparency that's going to be in those objects. So I'm going to keep the fuzziness down and here's the thing, when I do that, what it's choosing is it's choosing the white background. And that may throw you off a little bit until you realize, okay, that's actually easier than trying to choose the right color for all these keys. I just now simply have to hit Command or Control Shift I, and it's going to invert the selection from the outside to the inside. Okay, and I could simply go Command J and make a copy of that. And let's do this. I'm going to make another copy and fill it with black. I always do that wrong. Fill it with white first, and then I have to back up and say, nope, let's fill it with black. And it does a pretty good job, but if we zoom in, you see it's getting a, a little fuzziness there, some little jaggies, as we call it, and a little bit of white that we don't like. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I almost always do this before I even take that step. Let's back up, undo, undo. Uh, I'm going to go back all the way from the beginning. I'm just simply going to go select color range, click on the white background, hit OK. Now Command Shift I to invert it. But then one more step <coughs> that I do is I go select modify. And because now I have the selection of the actual keys itself, I want to just contract in, contract or contract, in a couple pixels kind of squeezes in the selection and it knocks off some of those extra stuff. And I usually just simply do it by two pixels and it helps clean up a lot of those extra jaggies. And so now I'm going to do that and let's see the difference when I fill with black and we zoom in. It gets rid of all those little extra jaggies that were on the edge there. Now here's one of the problems that will show up. Uh, if you notice, it's taken out a little bit of a section of the keys right here. You can see the black. It's normally white, a highlight. Anywhere where there was pure white, it's going to knock that out. But what I find is sometimes it's easier, uh, depending on what's going on, just to hit the art history brush and try to paint back in. Or what I actually do, if it's a little goober like this, is just grab my paint brush, set it to white, and just come in and paint Try to keep inside the key. Don't take too much caffeine before inside you do that. Inside the lines now. Stay inside the lines. And I just quickly make a couple, couple, couple quick, wow, having a hard time speaking today. Mm -mm. Couple quick dabs, and I can knock out any areas that the uh, white has been knocked out. And I find that's a lot faster than trying to go back in there and just retouch all those little areas. But now, if I get rid of all that, you see I've got all these keys that I've been able to cut out and they're ready to use anytime I want in a couple quick clicks. Now here's the other side of it. Let's say I've done that and I've cut out 
uh, this girl and done a pretty good job, this little hula dancer here, because you know we all need hula dancers. But you can obviously see the problem area. Whenever it gets down to these fuzzy areas here, it leaves a lot of white jaggies and stuff going on there. Well, what I like to do with this, sometimes the easiest thing to do is instead of trying to get in there and be very precise and knock those out, I would just simply come over and grab my burn tool, set it to highlights, and crank my exposure way up. And I'll come in and I'll just start knocking out those highlights because it's only going to hit basically the white areas. And so I just start knocking down those white jaggies to the point where they don't look so <coughs> obvious. And in a couple quick seconds, I'm able to, to really knock those down. But then what I will do is grab my, my paintbrush, I'll select the color of whatever's going on there, and now instead of it being a white issue of a, a white jaggy, it's got those little, they're now darker areas that can pick up the paint. I want to make the selection. Quick tip for making a selection of an object you already have, go over to the thumbnail, hold down your command or control button, and your icon changes. Now I've got the marching ants of the actual doll figure there. And now I can come in and just paint with that color. And let's deselect. And you can see I've turned those white jaggies into the color of the rest of it. And, and it, it's done a lot easier when I've taken and I've burned those white areas down with the, the burn tool. So whenever you've got those little edges that are kind of messing with you, and especially if you're making a composite and they don't seem to sit down right, maybe think about grabbing your burn tool and going in there and just hitting those edges set to highlight with your burn tool. Mm -hmm. And you can knock those down really easily instead of trying to go in there and being very precise with your selection and knocking those out. So just a quick tip, somebody showed me that a while back and it really has saved my workflow sometimes instead of taking all that time to be precise, I just burn it down and play with it from there. That's so clever. real quick, selection, use the color select, and then if you get some jaggy, either try to knock it out or go in there and dodge and burn. And those are my two quick tips for today. It just points out you don't have to be 100% perfect on the front end of an extraction. You can actually think about it and you'll know what you can fix on the back end and uh, doing stuff like that as well. Well, so. and also mm -hmm. knowing where it's going to be in the mm -hmm. image. Oftentimes I will get too precise because I tend to get a little OCD. I get too precise yeah. trying to cut everything out and then I'm going to put it as a little part of the image way in the back mm -hmm. and I'm like, man. And then you have to consider, it. Is it a detail that's necessary? Right. You know, are you going to break your back trying to extract a little tiny element and is it really going to be you know make any, make any big deal right. in the final composite so consider that too you don't want to waste time on something that's not even going to be a significant part of your image anyway so all right we have another peach pit e deal this week go over to peachpit.com/kelby1 check out this great ebook deal and if you enter the code kelby1 you'll get a fantastic discount on that prize or that book now i mentioned prize because we have a couple because you're a prize, Corey. couple of prizes here. What do we have here? Oh. Well, Corey, we've got the Expo Disc 2.0. I love the Expo Disc. If you haven't played with the Expo Disc, it is great for getting the proper white balance uh, right from your camera. Yes, you can adjust it in Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, but this is a great little tool, especially when you've got mixed lighting issues. It's a great thing to have. I love this mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. I give it two thumbs up. All right, I have no thumb opinion on this one, but I just think it's a really cool, interesting looking book. Senior High School Portraiture, Everything You Need to Know to Run a Successful Business. There you have it. You've been wondering how to run a successful business? It's there all right go. here. If it you're may, into high school portraiture, you're into high school this portraiture, is your book. It's by Sal Sincata. Yep. And, and you will win that by going to kelbyone.com slash webcast slash contest. Go to the pull down menu, look for Photoshop user TV, into your ne email, name, a comment, a question, a joke, fashion, <laughs> Tips advice for, <laughs> for either one of us, doesn't matter, we'll, we'll appreciate anything. But that will, of course, put your name in the running and the winner we will pick at random. So good luck to you on that, I believe. I think we're done. Is that is it? Yes, all I right. I think we're done for yeah. this week. Thank you so much for watching us. We will be back. Next week, make sure you check out all the stuff over at kelby1.com mm -hmm. for myself, Pete Collins, and Corey Barker. I know. And I just want to say, we'll be having a little kind of Photoshop World wrap up next week. We're going to talk about what we did in Atlanta. So even though we're here, we're actually there now, but not here. 
sort of thing. It's all trickery. But we'll be back next week. We're going to talk about all the great things that happened to Atlanta and why you should be at the next Photoshop world. Until then, bye-bye.